All right. Happy Tuesday night, everybody. Welcome to the daily broadcast coming to you from the Arctic Air Studios, brought to you in part by the wonderful people at McAlpin Chiropractic. Remember, if your back's out of whack, don't call it quack. Call Kevin Mack. Not his slogan at all. Would not be legal, but would be cool. Great Red Raider, Great West Texan. Obviously, all the communications tonight, whether you are on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, doesn't matter. Thank you, United Supermarkets. I was there this afternoon picking up some uh, honey crisp apples and a few other uh, delectable treats that uh, maybe it'll turn into supper tonight. We'll see. All right. So you guys get in on that. Uh, I'll tell you a story about this shirt. Thank you, Boot City. One money saving mile outside the West Loop in Lubbock. The official Western wear apparel provider for uh, theraiderland.com. I'll tell you a story about this shirt as we go through. Now, you guys know what to do. The early arrivals, doesn't matter where you are, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, anything else, uh, you get in, let us know the audio is good, the video is good. Give us thumbs up, just give us a shout out. Then you share it, you invite people in, you say, we're talking tech baseball, we're talking about the greatest what ifs in sports history for your favorite teams. Uh, and we'll talk a lot about Texas tech what ifs. We, uh, we pay homage to Steve Sloan, the kid coach, former Texas tech coach, passing away age 79. Uh, here recently. You saw Don's write-up was great in the AJ. Hopefully you guys caught it. So that's what we're doing tonight. Once you get in, we're getting in and out before first pitch tonight at seven o'clock there uh, in Vietnam. So we'll, we'll get this going. Then we got baseball tonight. I reserve the right to come back with uh, an emergency diamond talk. If cool things happen tonight, I reserve the right to do that. Otherwise diamond talk tomorrow after the series wraps up. All right, let's get it going in three, in two, in one. Good evening, West Texans. All you good, fine, friendly folks out there who wish you were. I'm Ryan Hyatt, theraiderland.com. Start your day there every day. All the cool stuff we do archived there. Coming to you from the Arctic Air Studios. If your air is not Arctic when it gets warm, you need to call the bear, call the bear.com. All right, simultaneous sip, everybody. And we find out what's on your mind tonight. Uh, we have Tech Baseball said it's a huge resume builder just by playing Arkansas. And I want to double check, make sure I get this right. Click on something. There we go. So Texas Tech starts the day at 30, 36, I believe. Actually, that didn't sound right. I'm going to double check. I'm going to reload this and make sure I got the right thing. So uh, Texas Tech starting the day at. 36, yeah. Arkansas, after getting swept by Alabama, obviously drops down a little bit, but you're still looking at an RPI of six. That's really good. So just by playing Arkansas, just by playing these games, this is going to help the metrics for Texas Tech. If Tech can somehow get a game, whether it be tonight or tomorrow, if they can get a game, Maybe Erdman goes out of his gourd tonight. The bats do what they have not done on the road, which is actually drive runs in when runners are in scoring position. The last time Erdman was out against Stanford, uh, tough day of pitching conditions, and he held Stanford down. Uh, well, you can say Stanford's not nearly as good as what you normally think they are. Certainly no Arkansas this year. But he did it. And that tells me, He's got a little bit of something between the noggin, between the ears, in his noggin. Still a little toughness to pitch like that. Now, uh, Arkansas is a different deal. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But just by playing Arkansas, you lose nothing on the RPI. But if you're Texas Tech right now, even with the uh, 36 RPI, one of these wins would actually be bigger mathematically. Stay with me on this conversation here mathematically it would be bigger than taking the series from TCU, which was basically where you were in the mid-30s on the RPI. Now, all things considered, you would have liked to have taken the series from TCU and then see what you do here. But if you find yourself in this situation, mathematically, a win over Arkansas is going to be a bigger impact moving you up the RPI chart, even on a midweek game, than taking a Sunday game or a Saturday game you should have taken one or both against TCU. 
Now, I said stay with me because I'm going to give you the backside of this here in just a second. Hey, they're, they're jumping in all over the place, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. We want to hear from you. If you're wherever you are watching tonight, even if you don't have a comment or a question, we hope you do. Thanks to United Supermarkets. By the way, the Smithfield tenderloins that you can get that are pre-marinated, thank you, United. I want you to jump in. Just say hi. Just say, hey, we're watching. We're paying attention. We're out there. We're growing Raider land, and then uh, we're sharing it with our friends. So the backside of either Robert, I'll, I'll get to that here in a second. Uh, Robert with a good comment on a retiring great announcer. The backside of this would be the committee will factor in, yeah, you won a game against Arkansas, but it's a midweek. And even though Arkansas has tremendous midweek pitching, uh, the Bybee kid throwing tonight's got a microscopic ERA in nine innings worth of work. Now, he's not a guy that's going to go deep, but he's a guy who pitches well. So the human element does come into play. I don't want you to think I'm saying that, oh, yeah, uh, you beat Arkansas game and you rock it up to 20 or 19 in the RPI and you're at, no, 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 no. The, the, the human beings will factor in it was a midweek. But would you rather win one than lose one? And that's where you are right now. You're going to get some games. You're going to get some quality games. Now, uh, I want you guys to start firing away the biggest what-ifs for your favorite team. We asked this on social media yesterday uh, on our uh, Facebook page, Ryan Hyatt's Raiderland, on Twitter, at Ryan Hyatt Media. The biggest what-ifs for your favorite team's college or pro. What if something had gone the other way, good or bad? How different would history have been? For Texas Tech, there are a lot of different what-ifs, including – as we uh, celebrate Steve Sloan upon his passing, kid coach. What are those things that you would say the biggest what is for your favorite teams? Indeed, uh, James, the talking box is on. All right, so you guys are getting in on the comments. Let's get on the comments now and fire away. I don't want you guys to be reticent tonight to uh, join us on that. Oh, and one more thing, just because I don't want people to think I didn't uh, see it, notice it, or want to talk about it. Uh, Darian Williams, Texas Tech basketball. He went into the portal. He came out of the portal. He went into the portal. He came back to Texas Tech. So that's a good thing, right? Robert, John Sterling retires because of health problems. Said it was getting harder to get motivated uh, to get uh, out to the ballpark. Still enjoy the broadcasting. John Sterling, great broadcaster. Many, many teams over the years. It is high. It is deep. It is far. It is. It's a Ruthian blast. All rise for the judge. Uh, great call. Great, great uh, TV. And it, like many, he started on radio. But he really blended his call to TV quite nicely. He did not over-announce. And hate to see guys like him stepping away, get it. You know, it became harder and harder for him over the last couple of years. Couldn't travel, do a lot of things. So there you go. Uh, James, what if Culver stayed one more year and COVID doesn't happen for basketball specifically, 19 to 20? Um, I don't know that it would have made that much of a difference. Maybe. Maybe because, but you look at who you, who else you lost. And the biggest losses on that team, to me, were still Tariq Owens and the injury that Owens had. That's the biggest what-if on 19. But without those guys coming, you you had a, a depleted team that even with Culver, I think, in 20, I don't think you're probably appreciably better. What did 20 uh, – they lost uh, – was that the uh, the bubble game against Arkansas and Musselman? Was that the loss on that? I'm trying to remember. It's been a, been a minute. Uh, I think that was it. I don't know that you're that much better if Culver stays. What if John, says Robert, I agree. What if John or Mark or Matthew or Luke? What if any of them? Uh, Moody was uh, absolutely a key player. He actually played much better defense than people realized, and he kind of helped out with some critical shots. 
And he's a good dude. Biggest what ifs in your favorite sports team's history. We asked that tonight. College or pro? Texas Tech, Dallas Cowboys, Chicago Cubs, it doesn't matter. The biggest what-ifs in your favorite team's history. Uh, we are talking Texas Tech baseball. Hey, if you can't hit better than, uh, like, you know, 245, 270 tonight, runners in scoring position, you're probably going to lose. You need to uh, actually drive in some runs. It would be kind of handy. But by all means, we're going to continue to gripe about the pitching, which has, in Big 12 play, given you – more or less every opportunity to win. There will be people nitpicking everything else. And we talked a lot last night about tech fans all of a sudden wanting small ball. We're not button enough. That ain't who you are. If you want that, you don't want Tim Tadlock. If you want to say you don't want Tim Tadlock, that's fine. Say you don't want Tim Tadlock. The College World Series trips were cool. That was nice. Now we want to do something different. And we want to do something that nobody else is doing in college baseball right now, which is small ball. Uh, Chris... 2020 Tech Baseball, biggest what if. That was a, a big what if. Uh, that team, as you uh, well, you gone out to Mississippi State, I think it was, come home, play Rice, and I think I've got the scenario right, and West Virginia's coming in and it scuttled. That was going to be a good team. That was a well-balanced team. Well-balanced team. Uh, good offense, good defense, good pitching. You know, seemed everything seemed to be right. And would have loved to have seen that team go to fruition for Texas Tech baseball. Painful. I'll tell the story about this shirt, too. Hey, if you're on uh, Facebook, we want to hear from you. If you're on Facebook, we'd love to hear your comments. If you're on Twitter, easy to do. Jump on Twitter. Hit us up with that. Then you can share it with other people. All you got to do, thanks to United Supermarkets, you just type away. Hit the uh, comment question or anything else. And YouTube, it's the same thing. We got Roberts on YouTube. Uh, what if John Elway got drafted, got traded to the Cowboys instead of the Broncos? Uh, was it the Colts that had his rights initially? I think Jim Irsay they traded the Broncos. So uh, Elway goes to the Cowboys in '83. Was it '83? Danny White still is prime. Uh, it wouldn't happen because Danny White was coming off of uh, three. NFC Championship game appearances there uh, against the uh, against the Eagles, the 49ers, and the Redskins. Uh, it, it wouldn't have happened. It just wasn't going to happen. So, to me, that's a non-starter on Elway uh, going to the Cowboys instead of the Broncos. Uh, 2008, you beat OU, says Donald. That is such a far-off what-if that it's not even worth considering to me because you were so not close to beating OU. Now, if it were a close game, yeah, maybe. The bigger what if on that year is what if Blake Gideon holds on to the interception and you don't beat Texas? What is the trajectory for Mike Leach, the program, after that? How different would you remember that era if Blake Gideon holds on to the interception and you don't get the touchdown there against Texas? You come back the next week, you blow the hell out of Oklahoma State, get the LBW uh, against uh, Oklahoma, then you've got Baylor, and then you uh, limp into the Cotton Bowl. So yeah, the the O the OU game is not a what if for me for tech for tech football because you just weren't even close, not even close at all. My what ifs kind of have to be close. I'm talking about the biggest what ifs in your favorite sports team's history. Talking tech baseball. Uh, we will get into uh, the passing of Steve Sloan, who uh, coached one of the big what-if teams uh, there in 76 and 77. What if Houston doesn't get the interception in the end zone? What if the next year uh, Rodney Allison doesn't have his ankle broken by Texas A&M? How different would that have been? And what if there were, there were a couple of what-ifs in the 70s with tech football that I've written some alt history on it. that Most of you have probably forgotten or whatever. That's okay. We'll get into that. Uh, you guys jump in on the uh, comment line, the text line, however you want to do it, whether you're on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or anything else. Uh, I want to hear from our uh, Twitter people tonight. Love hearing from the Twitter people. Thanks to United Supermarkets. Uh, James, what if the error after the 
Bartman debacle doesn't happen to the Cubs win the World Series in 01. Uh, so I'm trying. Who who won in 01? Was that uh, was that Met, uh, Yankees? Yankees Mets Subway Series. Who won 01? Arizona versus. I'm trying to remember. Probably not the Cubs. Uh, the Marlins. Okay, yeah, it was Florida. Um, I don't. I don't know. Maybe. I've really spent a lot of time debating that one in my mind, James. Maybe they do. Probably not, though. Probably not. What if the uh, what if the Cowboys don't make the Herschel Walker trade, says somebody today. They're in uh, 1989. What if they don't fleece Minnesota for 500 draft picks? What if they don't do that? How different is the Cowboys' trajectory? Because the entire legacy of Jimmy Johnson is built upon that trade, that he had multiple darts to throw at the wall and just, we're going to draft this guy and this guy and this guy, and some of them are going to hit because we've got so many and we don't have a salary cap. What if there's no salary cap in 1994 or five, whenever they uh, got that thing done? And the Cowboys operate the way the Steelers operated in the 70s and the way the Niners operated in the 80s. I think those are two huge, huge eras for the Cowboys that if you do a what, what if it's a little different, macro, micro, that I look at. What if Nelly Cruz makes that catch and the Rangers beat the Cardinals? They win a World Series that year. I don't think they would have gone on to be a dynasty, but they win a World Series long before they did last year. What if Tech hired Rich Rod instead of Leach? Yeah, how fundamentally different would that have been? It would have been different. It would have been different. Would he have been successful here? Um, you know, We saw him within a big 12 footprint for a while. I don't know. And you were this close to hiring him, but his wife, allegedly didn't like Lubbock. So you don't hire him. You know? Uh, Robert, Danny White, Bob Brunig would have been uh, part of the package going back to the Broncos. Eh. I don't think they would have done it. I, I really don't think it would have happened. So, but let's say that happens. You've got an aging Tony Dorsett that you obviously didn't replace. You've got an aging Tom Landry as opposed to an ascending Dan Reeves. Landry would not have allowed or wanted Elway to be Elway. Run, keep the play alive, do so. He had his Staubach for doing that. He, he would, you know, even if you get him, I don't think it would, would have worked out that well. Now, you're probably better mid to late 80s just with him being there but I don't think you'd do anything. What if the Rangers repeat, call me in a year? What if Ludwig doesn't double bogey 11 on Sunday? He wins the Masters. No, he didn't win the Masters. Scheffler would have just like gone like total albatross or just something awesome and would have beat him. Yeah, uh, I need to go back. Uh, we're talking tech baseball too. Taking on Arkansas tonight, huge resume opportunity. Zero downside. You lose two games, doesn't matter. Uh, you win one, it's huge. Probably better than beating uh, TCU, quite honestly, from a mathematical standpoint. Uh, we've got Hudson White in the lineup, hitting seventh, uh, two forty-seven. Molina's been pitching on the weekend. I believe he pitched on Saturday when they got swept by Alabama. Uh, so there you go. And Zach Erdman getting the start for the Red Raiders. Uh, is anything interesting in the lineup tonight for Tech? No. It's going to be Cash, Harrelson, Bazell, Green, and Woodcox, one through five. Uh, that ought to be enough on any given night to get five runs. Should be. Uh, Damian Bravo went out the other day, wrist injury, not in the starting lineup. That probably illustrates he was trying to fight through an injury Friday, Saturday into Sunday. 
and just looked lost at the plate for most of the TCU series. Not just striking out, but just lost. Uh, and hopefully that's not going to be a long-term thing. If it is, that's really bad. Uh, you got McGee hitting six at third. Second base, TJ Pompey. Don't ask him to bunt, Tim. Don't, 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 don't ask these guys to bunt. Don't give in to the small ball crowd. Tracer Lopez hitting eighth. And then Dylan Maxey behind the plate tonight. As Kevin Bazell will be in the DH role. Give him a little night off in the midweek uh, to rest those knees. That's a good thing. Is uh, Tech in the hunt for a regional bid? No. Texas Tech, if the tournament started today, Donald, would absolutely be in the NCAA tournament. Uh, RPI 36, they're well within the uh, bubble right now. So now they're not in the host conversation. Let's not even talk about that. But uh, you're in the tournament right now. You're just trying to not be a crappy three seed. Here's the good good news about playing Arkansas this late. The committee will be reluctant to send you back to Fayetteville as a three seed. So that's actually kind of good. James, what if what if Montana doesn't complete the catch to Dwight Clark? The Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Tom Landry coaches two more years and retires in the mid-80s after getting that last Super Bowl championship. It's beautiful. Albert, what if the Bears draft Mahomes? His career is over, doomed to failure, a bad organization, as opposed to going to a good organization. He is um, sitting on his third head coach, and they're trying to figure out, why is this not working? And he ends up not signing a second deal. He leaves Chicago, and he goes to Carolina and takes on a Carolina team that uh, is about as dysfunctional as it. But he gets paid, you know, because everything else. Yeah. Bears draft Mahomes. Arizona. What if Arizona had somehow ended up drafting Mahomes? Horrible. All right. Biggest what-ifs for your favorite teams. We've written about this. We've talked about it before. Two big ones in the 1970s for Texas Tech football. Uh, instead of hiring Jim Carlin away from West Virginia, there was a young assistant coach at the time out of Nebraska who really wanted the job interviewed, uh, but wasn't wearing cowboy boots, apparently. That's, that's a myth. And Texas Tech passes up on Dr. Tom Osborne. How different are the early 70s if Tom Osborne becomes head coach at Texas Tech as opposed to Jim Carlin? Now, Carlin had great success, obviously. Some of the best seasons Texas Tech football has had. Amazing recruiter. Does Osborne come to Tech and stay? Does he leave? The dynamic would have been different. Obviously, somebody places build uh, Devaney at Nebraska, and that changes in the old Big Eight. How different is Tech football if, if Tom Osborne is your head coach in the early '70s instead of Jim Carlin? Would have been amazing. Now let's do another one. Let's do another one. Steve Sloan, rest in peace. Great coach. Uh, the recru recruiting classes that he left for Rex Dockery were not great. But the kid coach had his best success at Texas Tech, the uh, great 76 season. And he had three, I think, future NFL coaches, including obviously Bill Parcells, Romeo Cornell, uh, on that staff. So let's say Sloan leaves and goes to Ole Miss because he wanted to get back to the SEC. He wanted to become the head coach at Alabama, where he played college football for Bear Bryant. So let's say in 77, Sloan leaves, and Parcells, instead of going to the Air Force Academy and becoming the head coach, they give Bill Parcells the head coaching job at Texas Tech. In my heart, in my mind, I believe they would have built on the success of 76. The recruiting goes up. Parcells wins a national championship in 79 or 80. It has an incredible run during a little bit of a blip downtime in the in the 
the Southwest Conference. You had the changeover as Akers comes in and replaces Royal. Arkansas, uh, you know, Frank Broyles is gone. Lou Holtz in and out. There's flux in the uh, Southwest Conference. Emory Ballard and uh, Tom Wilson at A&M, that your Giants, your powerhouses, there was a moment there where Texas Tech could have asserted themselves. And Parcells, he comes in, he coaches for five or six years. He gets them a title. And then he goes to the Giants from Texas Tech, doing a little bit of a Jimmy Johnson thing, going to the Giants from that way. Can you imagine that? Bill Parcells, head coach, Texas Tech. Like th- those, that's that's one of the biggest what ifs for me because it was all there. It could have happened. He wanted to be a head coach. He went to Air Force. Air Force was not as good as Texas Tech in the late seventies. I don't know how many people know these backstories. That's why I kind of like telling it. Uh, what if the Roma to Des catch no catch is called a catch? You. St- Still got to go win the game. Does it change anything fundamentally, I think, for Jerry Jones and uh, the Clapper? No, I don't think so. Uh, then we don't get the uh, Catholics versus convicts in the 80s. Yeah, there you go. I uh, would love to hear from you guys on uh, Twitter. If you're on Twitter and you want to jump in, you can. You've got a few more minutes. Easy to do. Even if you just watch it on Twitter and say, hey, we're watching on Twitter, man. United Supermarkets takes care of all the communications and everything else. Uh, so we thank them for that. You need to head to your local United Supermarkets or Market Street. They support Texas Tech, unlike some grocery store chains around the state. Uh, biggest what ifs, Arkansas and Tech getting ready to go here in a minute. Reserve the right to come back tonight. Talk a little more baseball. If events weren't otherwise, tomorrow, definitely Diamond Talk. Brought to you by Thacker Jewelry here in Lubbock, Texas. Get it? Diamond Talk? Thacker Jewelry? Diamond Talk? Yeah, okay. I figure we don't have to explain that anymore. Uh, we got to say uh, also uh, salute and rest in peace. 97-year-old former Dodgers pitcher, the Brooklyn Dodgers, Carl Erskine passing away. And uh, apparently we lost Whitey Herzog at age 92, the former uh, skipper there for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals back in the 80s uh, at 90. I, man, I, I'm always bad about, and I would do this on the radio show all the time with uh, Rob Bro, and I'd, I'd like say somebody was dead and they weren't. I thought he was dead. Well, Whitey Herzog. Here's to Whitey and all the great uh, Bush beer and uh, great beer commercials that he did over the years. Make beer commercials great again. Can we do that? Can we make that happen? Oh, I told you I'd tell you about this shirt. So the reason I brought out this shirt, shout out uh, Boot City, official Western wear apparel here in Raiderland. So you need a little something against Arkansas. So I wore this shirt at the College World Series. The last time Tech beat Arkansas was 2019. One of the most emotional wins I've seen out of that program, watching those players coming back to the locker room underneath the stands there at TD Ameritrade. Everything else, after losing an 18 to them in the College World Series, they'd also lost in the regular season there in uh, Arkansas in a one-off game. Uh, that that was one of the most emotional moments I've seen this program have. Kind of one of the highest highs they've had in Omaha. Uh, so I, I had this shirt on that day, but I also had this shirt on when Tech had their first College World Series win, thanks to Boot City, against Florida. So I figured... It's in the back of the closet. I'm not one to give up on a garment just because it has a little bit of a wear about it, as my wife would say. I figure if it's not, I don't think it's out of style by any stretch. Um, So I figure if anything, bust it out tonight. See if it's got a little bit more magic in it left over from Omaha with two of the biggest wins Texas Tech has had in program history. And make no mistake, if you can get a win tonight against Arkansas, uh, that's going to be a big win right there. So, there you go. Thank you very much. No, oh, well, there you go. Hey, cool, cool thing. Hmm. All right, your last chance. Fire away. Hey, good to see you there, Trace. 
your last chance, get your questions, comments in, or otherwise. <sighs> oh, man, it is almost game time. Yeah, we got to get out of here. Uh, what you can do is share this on Twitter, Facebook, everything else, theraiderland.com. Go to the website every day. All I ask is that you share everything we do and uh, hit up all of our great sponsors and tell them thanks for being a part of it, right? Uh, what if the old Rosenblatt Stadium is still used as tank win? Uh, that, that thing was a rocket launching pad, uh, you know, at a different era. TD Ameritrade plays smaller. Yeah, Tech and uh, Rosenblatt would have been good for like 12 to 15 runs a game. No doubt about it. All right, let's go watch some baseball. Keep your eyes out tonight. I may jump back in with you, okay? Don't freak out if we do. It says in stream. Do we in stream? Yeah, we in stream. All right, we in the stream. Then we got to hit this button. So we hit the button.